do you want to go? Mr. Tejeda, do you want to go into the substance abuse felony punishment facility? All right, Mr. Tejeda, why were you late? I feel about that. Uh, your honor, I, uh, I got kind of an older vehicle, and I guess this morning the battery was going leather. It just didn't want to cooperate. I had to find a neighbor to kind of give me a jump start. I do apologize for that. Okay. All right. You can't be late again, okay? I understand that. All right. So uh, today is his plea deadline date. Right. Yes. So is he? He wants a jury trial. All right. Uh, State, how long do you expect the jury trial to last on Mr. Tejeda? It's a failure to stop and render aid. Yeah. Marcus has been, uh, I remember reviewing that case Marcus has been probably going to take four to five days or Cases. Okay. But they, they're also not going to consolidate them. They're going to try them separate. They want to try them back to back to back. Okay. I don't know if that's going to take four or five days. All right. We'll see what happens. All right. Time. I appreciate that. Appreciate do, you, uh, do you have all the discovery? All right. So, State, I'm going to need a discovery acknowledgement in each one of these cases. And, Ms. Ferguson, I need a jury trial date on Mr. Tejeda. They say it's going to take four to five days. All right. Your jury trial date is going to be February 7th at 9 a.m. All right. Your plea deadline date has expired. The court will not consider any plea bargain agreements in this case without good cause. Otherwise, you have to apply open to the court. Do you understand? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Um, Judge, before uh, hey, just to let you know, we do have a victim impact statement, and uh, the next of kin is not able to log into Zoom, so we'd be asking for a, a reset for sentencing in this case. Sure. And we can, um, if they want to appear by Zoom on a different date, we can do that on a uh, different date. So just let me know when they'll be able to Zoom in. Does anybody have an idea? I don't know. We had tried to meet with her yesterday as well by Zoom, and she wasn't able to do that. So it may be easier to bring her in in person for it. All right. Do, well, do you have an idea of what date you want to come back on? If you all can check on that while we do the plea, and then we'll see. All right. Uh, court is calling 2022 CR 7806 State of Texas versus Johnny Tejeda. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Jorgens for the state. Defense. Alex, Alex Shar for Mr. Tejeda. And are you Mr. Tejeda? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Tejeda, I'm showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Next, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Judge. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? No, Your Honor. We're waiving count two and proceeding on count one. Any no objection? objection? No objection. Mr. Tejeda, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand in count one, you're charged with the offense of failure to stop and render aid resulting in death? That's a second degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today, I'm sorry. <laughs> did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. And did you understand uh, in regards to your plea bargain agreement, the court does not have to follow that agreement? Yes, Your Honor. And if I don't follow that agreement uh, and give you more than you bargained for, you can withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Judge. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I do believe that, yes. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, to both. Mr. Tejeda, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page, did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, state is proceeding on count one, waiving count two. Punishments be assessed at 10 years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine, no application for deferred adjudication. State recommends community supervision. They will take in consideration 2022 CR 7807, 
2022 CR 7808. There's to be restitution uh, payable to the mm-hmm. next akin for Dylan Trevino, Melissa Aroha, A R A U J A, and then payable to victims under 2020 CR 7807, Mario Huerte, Y T U A R T E. And 2022 CR 7808, Monica Bell. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the paragraph entitled Waiver of Appeal Paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? Mm -hmm. We haven't had any hearings on any motions. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. State is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of 10 years. There'll be a TAP evaluation, 200 hours of community service restitution, the MRT and regular UAs. Did you understand those were recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, Your Honor. Then to the offense as charged in count one, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest, Your Honor. State, any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. The state offers exhibit one, the defendant's waivers and stipulation of evidence, as well as the discovered knowledge of this case. Any no objection. objection. Mr. Tejeda, I'm showing you what's entitled Wavering Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it, and did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right? For you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain solid. Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state would be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statement and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after viewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. And um, state, have you had an opportunity to receive a date? Uh, Your Honor, our Mexican indicated that she could come in on any day, so sometime later this week should be fine, uh, or at the court's convenience. Okay. Uh, does she want to come in um, tomorrow or Thursday? Or Friday? Um, just, just give her some time. If we could do Thursday or Friday, Judge, just to make sure she can. Oh, or not. I can't do Friday. Oh, okay. have a okay. federal sentencing in Del Rio at, in the morning. So then Thursday, Judge, if, if the court's okay. Is Thursday okay with you? I'll have to check my schedule, but I think it is. I will do that before I leave. Okay. Oh, well, you want to check it now? Just to be sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead and check it.
And thank you, Judge. We appreciate the court's oh. accommodation for this. Oh, no problem. Set in Kendall for an arraignment in the morning. You may be able to waive that arraignment. That could be available in the afternoon. All right. How far is Kendall from here? Um, it's not too far from me because I live out that way. It's about, but getting out of that court is, you know, half a morning type thing. Okay. Do you want to set it for Thursday in the afternoon? That would be, that would be great. All right, State, are you okay with Thursday? And let's say Thursday at uh, 1.30? As far as I know, Judge. All right. So, uh, Norma. On Mr. Um, Tejeda, we'll come back uh, for sentencing on the 9th at 1.30. All right, is there anything else for me to cite? No, no, All right, if you'll get the reset form from Ms. Ferguson, then you're excused. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so you wanted to approach on Mr. Scott? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Scott, you want to come forward? All right, we're here for a uh, motion to revoke, Your Honor. All right. Is this going to be a plea true or is it going to be contested? It's a true plea of truth. Okay. We have a recommendation for the court's consideration. All right. Court is calling 2022 CR 7806, State of Texas versus Johnny Tejeda. Can our parties announce for the record for the state? Danny West, welcome to the state of Texas. Defense? Alex Shar for Johnny Tejeda. Are you Johnny Tejeda? Yes, ma'am. Did you review the document entitled Motion to Revoke Community Supervision with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Johnny R. Tejeda who was placed on community supervision in 2022 CR 7806 uh, for the offense of failure to stop and render aid death on February 9, 2023 for a term of 10 years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right, state. Violated condition number one, on or about 15th day of July, 2023. In Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Johnny R. Tejeda, committed the offense to drive small talk in violation. How do you please to that? True or not true? True, Your Honor. Your Honor, state waives all the violations. All right, any objection to the waivers? No objections, Your Honor. <clears throat> Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true, uh, grant the motion, sentence you to 10 years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there a proposed agreement? Yes, Your Honor. The proposed agreement is for the defendant to plead to the DWI. No, it has not been completed yet. Sorry about that. Sorry. The defendant has entered and sat up with the warranty following the after sat that is our agreement, Judge. Um, I do have some some witnesses to give you some context. Yes. And uh, so at this time, if I'm if I may, Your Honor, I'd yes. like to call Daniel Garcia. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear affirm the testimony you give would be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, I do. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Daniel Garcia. All right, defense. Thanks, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Garcia, um, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm medically retired from the Navy. Okay. How long were you in the Navy? 13 years. All right. And uh, but when did you when did, when, when, when did you get out of the Navy? What I got out in uh, 2013, uh, medical uh, retired. Okay. Um, all right. Now, do you know uh, Johnny Tejeda? And you recognize him as the, the client that's in the orange jumpsuit, correct? Yes. All right. Um, tell the judge uh, how you how you got to how you met Mr. Tejeda. Uh, we met each other through uh, uh, cars, rented old cars, mm -hmm. and then I uh, um, had a house come up for rent. So I had asked him uh, if he knew anybody that wanted to rent a house, which he said that he would, because he was on a hard time. So I. I I went to the house to him, and uh, um, that's kind of how we met. We how, and how long ago was that? That was about a year and a half ago, maybe a year and three quarters now. 
Okay. Did you did you know him prior to doing that? Like how long have you known Johnny? For about three years total now. Okay. Um, uh, are you just his landlord, or is there a a, a, t a closer relationship? Uh, he's he's like a brother to me. Uh, we're supposed to start a business uh, for doing custom paint, mm -hmm. and uh, um... okay. When when you when you when you met him, um, what was your judgment of his of his so like, character? Then, um, he was really sad and angry. Um, over the time, I started talking to him and found out, found out more about him, and then we started hanging out more. He usually, comes to the house and then he'd go back, okay. and uh, um, he's okay. just totally different from. A year and a half ago to now. Okay. Now, are you aware that um, he was placed on probation in February of 2023 for a failure to stop and render aid um, that caused a death? No, at that time I didn't. I didn't know any of that. Okay. okay. Um, uh, but when you did meet him, um, you know, how did that happen? Well, like I said, when uh, um, I asked him that I have a house up for rent, he said he moved in and uh, I didn't know anything about that. But usually I'm a good judge of character and I let him move in. I'm not going to move into a house okay. that somebody destroyed. Okay. And how was he as a tenant? Good. I mean, if you're a bad person, I would have him in there. I would have kicked him out a long time ago. Okay. Um, so what is it about Mr. Tejeda that helped you uh, come to a conclusion about his character? That he's a good guy. It's kind of hard to explain because, I mean, I met a lot of people in the military. And uh, um, he's, uh, uh, he's, he's a good person. He's, it's kind of hard to explain, but. Well, can you try to explain it? Like in Give the judge, judge some well, examples. Been for me because uh, uh, I'm a single parent with three kids. And when my significant other left about a year ago, he was there for me. And uh, uh, we kind of helped each other out through the hard times that we're going through. What do you mean, help each other out? Well, I'll just talk, basically. I don't drink. Um, I'm taking care of three kids on my own. So he'd come over and we just hang out. He doesn't really talk to anyone. But a couple of people. Okay. And uh, did you, the people that he was hanging around um, before he started, before you two started getting into a closer relationship, how would you characterize those, those people? Uh, um, there's no way to dirt bags, I guess. I don't know how to say it. Okay. People that I wouldn't hang out with. Yeah. Um, Okay, that, that's, that's fine. I mean, dirt bags. That, that's so I got my, my friend, my other, my other friends that I hang out with. They're uh, um, one used to work in the movie industry. Another guy is uh, works for the AC. So they all got stuff going for themselves. We're building cars. So when he started hanging out with me, and he told me uh, the, the guys that he used to hang out with. Uh, I don't hang out with people like that, so I don't know how else. Okay. Say. Okay. Well, all right. So I mean, did you? Did you take on uh, the role of, of like a close friend or father no, figure? You're like a brother. But, um, he started coming and hanging out with us, and uh, we're real tight groups. Only like three or four of us that hang out together. Okay. And if he was any different, he would have kicked us out. Would have kicked them out. Okay. Um, how would you describe his work ethic? He's always busy. I know he has a lot of cars coming in. Okay. And we still have some more cars that need to be finished. What what kind of uh, what is does he do body and pain? Does uh, he do body engine? and pain, custom paint, uh, not so much engine, but pretty much body and pain. Okay, so um, all right. So when you told the judge that you you noticed a big change in him, can you can you give give us some specifics as to like how he was before and and how he is um, how he is now? Uh. Before he was always a uh, um, always in a bad mood, always depressed. I guess and now he's just he's always there. He's always just a real good guy. I don't know. Okay. Reliable. Uh, okay.
Okay. Um, um, so like three years ago, when, when you met him, um, you, you noticed he had a lot of anger issues and depression. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And have you seen any improvement in him? Yes. I've seen a huge improvement from then to now. Okay. Um, the anger that you saw. It's um, not there no more. Okay. And what about the depression? I'm not, you're not an expert on that, but right. just from your, um, no, we're, with we're, him. we're supposed to start a business. So, I mean, if his mind wasn't in the right place, he wouldn't be the right person. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, this business that you were talking about, who would be funding the business? Would that be you? Yes, yeah, I'll be funding okay. the business. All right. And you, would it be fair to say you trusted Johnny uh, enough that? Yes, you were going to open a business with him as your main employee? Yes, I trust him wholeheartedly. Okay. All right. Now, you understand that uh, in July of last year, uh, Mr. Tejeda was, was um, involved in a, a, DW, a, a driving while intoxicated as a second offense. Well, I don't know about the first offense. The second offense, I want to pick them up from Bouncy. Okay. So, yeah, let's talk about that. All right, so how did you find out that Johnny had, uh, was in the hospital? Uh, one of our friends told us that uh, um, he got into an accident. Okay. So I went to go look for him uh, uh, at the jail, and then I went. I think I, call, I got a call from his dad saying that he was uh, uh, a Bouncy. So I said, I retired. I'm retired, so I still went in and got him out of there. Out of okay, and uh, could you tell he was injured? Yeah, he was pretty banged up. Um, as far as I know, it was his ribs and wrists, and that's so far as I know. Okay. All right. Um, in the event that the, the judge does follow the uh, agreement and continues him on probation, um, and he is in uh, an inpatient uh, substance abuse alcohol re rehabilitation center, which it could be for six or more months. Um, would you still be willing to go into business and mentor, continue mentoring Mr. Tejeda and treating him like a brother? Yeah, yeah, still. All right. Is there anything I haven't asked you that you wanted to tell the judge about, Johnny? No, I mean, he's a real good person. You know, I mean, if he wasn't, I would not try to be investing money into a business between me and him. There's no way. Okay. Now, one thing I forgot to ask you about is after you picked him up from the hospital, um, were you upset at him? Yes. So when I picked him up, I kind of um, kind of talked some smack to him, told a couple of friends, and they kind of talked to him, like, what are you doing, you know? I can't say what. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, did you specifically tell him anything about the type of people that you hang around? Yes, that's the trigger told that. Right. So tell the judge. I don't bring. Uh, I don't bring people that are messing around into the people that I hang out with because uh, we have a lot going for us. I'm trying to do a lot of things here in San Antonio. I moved here from California uh, back in 2013 on opening a business. And the issue is, is that I haven't met too many people here that I could trust with uh, uh, money-wise. Mm -hmm. So when I met him, um, it just clicked. So I started reading him around, and everybody agreed to what what he's about. All right, passwords. All right, any questions? All right, thank you. All right, so I can tell y'all, this is what's going to happen in this case. Either he's going to prison or he's going into inpatient treatment to safe pee. Those are your two choices. Okay. Um, I'm not doing SADF. He doesn't need SADF. He needs something that is longer. He needs something uh, longer. And that's safe pee. So he can do safe pee or he can do prison. Those are the choices. As far as, can I just maybe give some, my, my two cents as to sure. those choices. I, I respect the court's decision and appreciate that. Um, as far as the, the substance abuse felony punishment facility, um, 
in talking to clients who have been there and how that program is designed. Um, yes, it is long. Yes, it is in the prison system. Um, but it's run not like an individual rehab or a, a group rehab where everyone is accountable for themselves, mm -hmm. but it's run as, for lack of a better analogy, like the scene in the movie Full Metal Jacket, where some one person makes a mistake and everybody else gets punished. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion about recovery, uh, I don't think that's the, the best way to impress upon someone um, to change their, to, to get a, a psychic change in their mentality and to adopt, you know, a spiritual full change in their attitude. If they're being held responsible for what other people do, when the program is all about being responsible for yourself and only controlling, trying to control yourself, because that's all you can control. Um, I understand the length of the program. Um, I've had cases where people were finished with the program and then they go to a halfway house and they're living in San Antonio and they get sent to a halfway house in El Paso and there's no support group there. Hmm. The, the substance abuse treatment facility, I, I know some of the people that work there. I know some of the people that work in, the, in, the reco in recovery within the Bear County system. They're good people. They teach the program and they do it well. And it's, it's, it can be anywhere from four to six months long, mm -hmm. um, followed by aftercare. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a substantial amount of time. And, and so I'd ask the court to, to reconsider um, sending Mr. Tejeda to SADF reconsider sending him to safe P instead of to the substance abuse treatment facility. Okay. All right. He's going to safe P or he's going to prison. And then as, as far as aftercare is concerned, he can speak to probation when they get to that point. And if uh, you find a halfway house here in San Antonio for him to be in preferably lifetime recovery, then he can go to lifetime recovery and lifetime recovery can place him in a sober support facility. Do you want to go, Mr. Tejeda, do you want to go into the substance abuse felony punishment facility? Or you just want to go to prison? I'll go to the substance abuse. Uh, Safe piece. Yeah. All right. Um, court, court will deny alternate main conditions to include safety and probation. Can we do safety followed by lifetime recovery? Judge, the only issue with that is it would have to be exited from the continuum of for safety. All right. So once he's completed with safety in custody and they're getting ready to send him to a, a halfway house, just let the court know. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, is there anything else? I didn't know if you needed to sign a certificate of appeal or anything like no, that. I didn't. All right. All right thank you. Thank you. Thank